Welcome back to Bloomberg Markets. I'm John Ehrlichman. We are seeing energy prices down sharply today, and that is weighing on oil stocks in Toronto, trading a number of factors at play here. As in the last week, we've seen WTI drop by roughly 10 bucks a barrel. Obviously, we've talked about the global banking uncertainty right now. What does that mean for the demand picture, the health of the global economy? There have been signs of supply, however, being greater than what some had thought. There's other factors out there, such as where money flows like into the U.S. dollar, how that impacts crude, and whether or not there is simply some program selling that is also at play. Let's get some more perspective now. Jan Stewart is global energy strategist to Piper Sandler. He's been kind enough to join us, as has our friend Andy Bell, fresh off market call, also the host of Commodities. Andy, I'll start with you. I mentioned there's there's several factors to consider mm -hmm. when trying to understand this weakness in crude today. Yeah, um, International Energy Agency adding to the pessimism, saying that in the first half of the year, we're likely to have a surplus. They do see strong growth over the course of 2023. World demand will get up towards record highs of 102 million barrels a day. It's so vast, the oil market. But in the near term, supply is outstripping demand. And uh, Jan, your take on what's going on right now. You know what? Uh, I agree with the International Energy Agency to, a, to only some point, right? Uh, we think actually that most of the inventory building of the first half is already done. Uh, we see very interestingly in America, huge inventory built, right? massive in January and Feb. Um, and now that is sort of coming off, right? We, we're no longer adding here in America. Uh, that's a start. I agree with you, Andrew, that there is, uh, you're not in the clear yet uh, from a fundamentals perspective. We, in our own work, we see uh, a deficit in the second quarter, small on crude oil. Uh, we'll see. Uh, the second half looks an awful lot better, always does, fine. But 10 bucks between now and a week ago, that's not data, that's not the IAA. No, it's, it, it's a massive, massive risk off move. Uh, and that is instigated by SVB, but it was also uh, a host of other factors that make people want to take oil money off the table. And um, some would argue that uh, geopolitics play in this as well, right? I mean, uh, the Chinese brokering a deal between Saudi Arabia and Iran, the market looks at that as something bearish because that's less supply risk, right? Uh, Xi Jinping going to the Ukraine, I'm sorry, to, not to Ukraine, to Moscow uh, next week, right? That's what it was to general the week after. Uh, either way, mm. uh, that is seen as a potential overture to or an opening to um, you know, talks that, that would end in a ceasefire and peace. Uh, that the market wants to read that. I think we've talked about that before. Mm -hmm. The market thinks of uh, peace in Ukraine as something bearish because there's less supply risk. We think of that as bullish because there'd be more demand, but whatever. Um, for now, it just adds fuel to the fire. Those kind of factors add fuel to the fire. And it's simply, you s the, the last factor that I would add is this feels like 2008. Credit Suisse in the headlines, bank failures in the headlines. And at that point, you liquidate. You make yourself more uh, you know, uh, able to withstand whatever comes next. Right? Sell, selling uh, and, now and, and perhaps asking questions later. Andy, I'll just bring you Absolutely. back to the conversation. You know, it's interesting because we are, we are seeing a reset on a lot of conversations right now. Uh, we're going to be talking later this hour about the reset on interest rates. You know, it was just a week ago we were expecting rates to continue climbing in the United States. Now there are lower odds that we'll even see another Fed hike in this cycle, which is a remarkable development given that global uncertainty right now. Jan was talking about China, too. I mean, coming into this year, you had a chorus of pundits who would come on and talk about some bullish signs for being invested in energy, and one was China's reopening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. and I mean, that it still looks as though the Chinese are desperate to travel. Uh, the reopening has been slower than some had expected. And it's interesting on China how the uh, this axis is emerging between China and Russia. Um, China brokering that deal in the Middle East, shutting out the U.S. The U.S. is kind of being left out of uh, some of these power maneuvers. IEA reckons that about 70 percent or more of Russia's crude exports went to India and China last month. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a power game being played that's leading out Washington right now.
So, Jan, um, you sort of laid the case uh, why one could still be somewhat optimistic longer term on energy, but there's big uncertainties yeah. in the short term. What are you going to be watching most closely in, in the days ahead? Uh, our technicals, guys. Uh, Craig, uh, on our end, is very, very good at technicals. He's going to tell us when the selling stops. That sounds very stupid simple, but you're not gonna buy until the selling stops, right? Clearly, there is massive selling interest here. So that needs to abate. Once it abates, back up the truck, because no way, no how, does the global supply uh, function of oil work at 60 bucks? Mm -hmm. Doesn't work. Uh, you would see all manner of mayhem in the upstream. Uh, and, and demand, I mean, Andrew, you said it yourself, right? Uh, demand in Asia is good, mm -hmm. right? Uh, I don't know. Do we, we, we see that. You have the data there, okay? So Credit Suisse does this or that. Does that make the Asia recovery stop? No, it doesn't. Uh, this, is a, this is a crisis, obviously, of confidence that we need to get through. Uh, oil gets sold off because you can sell it. Uh, there's a few other things you probably can sell. And uh, you know, that ends at some point. Uh, what was the easiest trade when oil went to negative $20 uh, WTI? Is a week later, just buy it. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, RBC says that if oil does get caught up in a sell everything um, maelstrom, and it, uh, it does kind of look like that, that the Saudis yeah. and their pals will be keen to step in and cut production. They feel that they've been too slow to do that in the past. Uh, I think the prince, uh, frankly, looks at this as, uh, as we do. It's a crisis of confidence. You take an oil off the market, it's not going to immediately solve that, right? But let's say that uh, you know, we're wrong. Two weeks from now, it turns out that demand is meaningfully lower. They'll cut. 